and action. Right, intro music and cue, intro music and go. Do a minor. Anyway, I've got this guitar. This is how I learn all of my scales. And I'm going to show this. This video is going to be about Messiaen's third mode, but I've got to get through the, the modes just quickly to show you. You're not going to see, I can see there's like too much light in here, but I'm going to tell you what we're doing. I learn all of my modes linear. What do I mean by that? Learn everything on one string. Um, so here we go Major. Now I've got to slow down because I'm going to scroll. I haven't done this in years. I just play it by ear now, but if I've got to try and remember what I'm doing, that's when I get screwed up. So that was major. One note difference. Instead of that note, we're going to do that one. Mixolydian. We're now going to do Dorian, which is octave, flat seven, major six, fifth, four, flat third, Dorian, major second, Pretty inoffensive. It's a, it's the most um, inoffensive out of the modes. I think you can't really hurt anyone with Dorian. Right now, let's do the next one, which would be A Aeolian, natural minor, octave, flat seven, flat six. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Fifth, fourth, flat third, second. Aeolian. So the next one we're going to do is Phrygian. You'll notice I'm doing this in the order of brightness. Most of you didn't even know that, but I'll show you in a minute. Octave, flat seven, flat six, five, four, flat three, flat two. Ooh, yeah, yeah, baby, yeah, yeah. It's getting nasty, isn't it? Gnarly, gnarly and nasty. Oh, well, let me just jump in with this, like, because I've got to, like, just look at this. Can you see this? This is original artwork by Donald Fagan. I was on the road with Steely Dan, and Donald, what, what he likes to do on his days off is like sit in his hotel room and do Photoshop with all the crew and put us into famous scenes. There's that one, and look at me, I'm with Marilyn Monroe. Anyway, back to Oliver Messiaen and Alan Holsworth. Alan approve of my sense of humour, I'm pretty sure. Where were we up to? I just did Phrygian, didn't I? See, you think I'd forgotten, but no. I'm testing my memory all the time. See, what you don't realise, you're my therapist. I'm getting a bit like, I'm not, but I keep questioning myself. It's like, I've got such complicated ideas in my mind that at times, I'm so in my mind thinking about these complicated ideas that I forget little things. Like mad, absent-minded professor, or not that I'm a professor. Anyway, where were we? Through, we did Phrygian, see it's everything. Sometimes I just humble on my little words. Um, so the next one is obviously, you know what they are. Do you know the order of brightness in the modes? Major becomes Mixolydian with a flat seven. Um, that becomes Dorian with a flat third and a flat seven. That becomes Aeolian with a flat seven, a flat six and a flat third. That becomes Phrygian with a flat seven, a flat six, a flat third and a flat two. Now we're going to do that with a flat five and that's going to be Locrian. Awesome scale. Everyone avoids the Locrian. Why? Because they don't know what they're dealing with. That's, that's the flat five. That is the tritone. This is that Tony Iommi interval. Everyone goes, Devil's Interval, rubbish. Listen, the, 
to trito I'm going to do a whole thing on tritone but tritone basically is the middle of any scale if you do the chromatic scale C C sharp D D sharp E E sharp F sorry E sharp F sharp G G sharp A A sharp B B sharp and then you come down the other way but you flip it around so you start on C C C flat B flat A flat G flat so G G flat F F flat E flat D D flat C right in the middle of that is the tritone it's right in the middle and the same thing on the circle of fifths I've got to always not look at the cam when I do circle of fifths I've always got to just remember clockwise is my anti-clockwise 12 o'clock 6 o'clock 3 o'clock 9 o'clock right at the top is C at the bottom is F sharp it divides a circle in half Circle of fifths is divided completely in half with a tritone. So is the chromatic scale, so is the cycle of fifths. Obviously, because the tritone sitting in the, the circle of fifths divides the circle and therefore divides the um, the, um, the circle of fifths, which travel, that's across seven octaves, the same range as a grand piano. Um, but all it is, think of it as like a balance, a tipping point. This is why human beings get nervous about it. It's a tipping point, it's right in the middle. It could, anything can go either way. Anyway, so let's get back to the scales because I get too sidetracked and then you get confused. Octave, flat seven, minor six, flat six. See, this is the problem. There's too many names for the same thing. Minor six or flat six, same thing. Flat five or diminished fifth. Four. Flat five, four. Or is that sharp four, Lydian? Well, see, I was going up, so technically it should be like it's changing. Everything's about changing direction in music. As far as I'm concerned, it's all about energy flow. It's flowing from one place to another. Now, I'm obviously in the minority with this, but don't worry about it. The more I teach you, the more you're going to see it. Octave, flat seven, flat six, flat five, four, flat three. So now we've done all of them, haven't we? No, we haven't. We missed one, didn't we? We missed the Lydian scale. But the Lydian is actually brighter than the major scale. I'm going to do it descending, which is not really technically correct, if you're in a system like I'm talking to about major and minor. Minor flowing around the anti-clockwise circle of fifths, and major goes clockwise. So... I'm going to do it descending first. Octave, major seven, major six, five, lydium four, sharp four, augmented four. Three names for the same thing. Major third, major second. Now when you come up, you'll hear that it's, that didn't really sound lydian, did you? Like, oh, I'm not sure, I didn't hear the lydium four. It, because I did it coming down, it wasn't in the same perspective as, or so you didn't hear it. Listen, I'll go up and see if it sounds different. Same notes. Root. Two. Third. Lydian four. Five. Six. Major seven. Octave. And that's the brightest of it all, because it's actually brighter than a major scale. But we work from a major scale. Well, you all do. You work from a, and I've had to learn that because it, that's the universal. You know, believe it or not, they say you know major scale everything works, works from a major scale. It doesn't. Everything works from a cycle of fifths. The major scale comes later in in the history of music. The first thing that happens is you divide the string into thirds. Now this is a universal thing. It's not just um, Pythagoras didn't just do it on guitars. I mean, he clearly didn't. He did it on monochords. It's just a single chord. He started dividing it up. And here's the thing most people don't get. When you divide the string into thirds, that simply means play the open note, whatever that might be. I'm going to do it on high one because 
you'll probably hear it better. When you go to the 7th fret, that's one third of the string length. When you go to the 19th fret, which I think is here, from the 7th fret to the 19th fret is the middle third of the string, and from the 19th fret to the bridge is the, is the final third. So if, when you divide the string into thirds, you get the, the second most powerful harmonic sits above that fret. Both those, opti both those harmonics are the same, and that harmonic is the seventh, second most powerful one on the guitar string, and it's actually um, the fifth of the major scale, which comes, it's funny, it starts with this division of strings. Now what you do, once you divide one string into thirds and you get that harmonic, tune the second string to that harmonic and divide that into thirds, get that harmonic, then, you know, and just repeat the process and it comes around, that's how you get the 12 tones, the 12 frequencies, not the notes, the 12 frequencies is super important. 12 frequencies give you 25 letters. That's the alphabet of music. They don't teach you this in school. They don't teach you this anywhere. I'm the only person teaching this. And that means that you've got 12 keys going sharp, which is major, and you've got 12 keys going flat, which is minor. Everyone on the planet only uses half of it. They go, they go down to six o'clock and that's it. They don't go past it. There's no need for it. There's no need for it in music, or is there? My belief is music is a byproduct of a bigger thing, and that bigger thing is what I'm pursuing. So although I'm not a great guitarist, I'm a terrible teacher and all these things, I'm on a quest for something bigger than actually music. My mission in life, I'm not a guitar player, I'm not a musician, that's not my quest. I've been a guitar, I've been all around it. I've seen things that people haven't seen because I'm not so preoccupied with writing songs and, and being me and, and being a guitar player. Um, so anyway, let's get to Alan Holzhoff. I need to get off this guitar, but you can see playing things laterally, I think they call that, a long string. Alan saw the whole thing, he saw the whole scale from top to bottom. I guarantee, not guarantee, but I'm pretty sure Alan learned the way we all did in the old days with a drone, and you learn all the, the you learn one string at a time. If you've got your um, E string, just use E string as a drone. I'll just show you something on the other guitar. Hang on, it might make more sense. Um, Sorry, I didn't mean it. Um, anyway, this guitar. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to do. I'm going to try and teach Alan Holsworth, but in the style of Django Reinhardt, meaning I'm going to use these two fingers. Except not Django's picking, Jimi Hendrix's thumb. In the other in, vi uh, videos, I talk about Django and, and Hendrix's thumb over the top. Yo, know, see, I'm not thinking like you. You're all trying to perfect a technique. I'm trying to diminish the technique to, to the people that got injured hands. My, I injured my hand on a motorcycle when I was 17. And I, you know, I've overcompensated because I looked at, you know, when your hand gets hurt, you look at people who got hurt. Django Reinhardt, Tony Iommi. And then you try and figure stuff out and you bring it back. Now, I'm working up to the point where I, I will have my hand efficient like Alan Holdsworth. But I don't want to sound like Alan. Alan doesn't want me to sound like him, but I'm going to have to try and teach you something. So here's a C major scale across all the strings, but I'm doing two notes per string. Listen to how it sounds. Right, now, so where, where am I? Paul McCartney always says, no, Sting says, until the bass player plays, you don't know where you are. And I'll show you an example of that, and this is how modes work. That sounds like C major, doesn't it? Right, watch this. You've ended on the F, which would be Lydian, because it's a four of C, which is a Lydian. Now, watch this. Haha, <laughs> E minor. Right, that's the first lesson. Play everything two notes per string. Actually, I've jumped ahead of myself, play everything one note per string. I'm gonna call this out to you and you're gonna get it, all right? C, play the major third on the next string, is E. E, play the minor third on the next string, is G. C major, thinking from C. Right, now, G is the new root. G, play the major third, is B. B, 
B is the new root, play the minor third, which is D. D is the new root, play the major root, sorry, the major third. I think, I, if I said major root, I meant major third. They go, basically from C it goes major third, minor third, major third, minor third, major third, minor. It's a universal thing. It's a cycle of fifths done in thirds, if that makes sense. See, this, this is why music's so complicated. Oh, it's the cycle of fifths done in thirds, played in thirds. And you get this sort of sound. Right, you'll know, some of you, the astute ones of you, will know, oh, that's the notes on the stave. On the E, every good boy deserves favours. F-A-C-E, face. Except it's not. Because the stave defies the cycle of fifths. Cycle of fifths came first, the stave came later. And they had to do it that way because they wanted no sharps and no flats so that they could then modify every note on the stave. But in reality, now when you say, well, what about cycle of fifths? Cycle of fifths isn't a man-made thing. It's a natural thing that Pythagoras discovered. He, well, we attribute it to him. It was way before then. I think the Sumerians and Egyptians knew all it. All these hieroglyphics and all this stuff that you see, you know, the circle of, um, when you see circles within circles, that egg of life or flower of life, all that stuff, that's what I think this is referring to. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, so play your C major. I mean, thinking from C, that's C major seven. C major seven with the nine. That's the Lydian four. So C, in reality, you're not working from C major, you're working from C Lydian. I got into this whole thing with Walter Becker, I was so confused, I said, Walter, help me. Like C major has got F as a natural four, but when you play it like the, cycle, the proper cycle, like the cycle of fit proper, I mean, that's just my, my interpretation, it gives you F sharp. Walter Becker then said, well, Yes, jazz people will avoid the four, or they'll play the sharp four more often than not. But he said there's a whole thing written by a guy that Donald and all the jazz guys were influenced by, and it's George Russell, but he couldn't remember the guy's name. I can tell you a whole story of how I went on a quest. And anyway, I, I can tell you all these different people who have influenced me to get me to this place, if you want. Most of you are not interested, I know. Um, so, maybe do all the scale using just one finger. then use that thing. So this is like an Allen logic. It's like find something and find all the permutations of that. So now we've done this, the C major scale, one note per string. I just showed you two notes per string. And I've shown you that any root note you put under that, be it um, any one from the, the major scale, be it C, D, E, F, G, A or B, it's going to give you the seven modes. So think about that. Maybe tune your E string. You can go down to D. You can tune it up. You can take it up to B. It doesn't have to be the E string. It can be the top E string, and you do it from the, you know. Don't get stuck in these ways of thinking that people tell you, oh, do it, just do it this way. Always do the opposite to what people are telling you. Anything I tell you, go and look. I always did the opposite. I'm pretty sure Alan did too. That's how you find your own way. Now, just like I'm doing two fingers, like Django, and and a thumb. Alan didn't play that way, he played that way. And he also, he's coming from a violin perspective. It's very different. Um, my point is, it's like when you're trying to emulate people, cross them over a bit. Take Alan Holzer's type thinking and scales or messy ends, play them like Django would, except don't play it completely Django, use your thumb or maybe use finger picking. That way, you're going to get something original. The whole point, Alan didn't want to copy people. He wanted originality. He wanted to be different to everyone else. He didn't like everyone else's how they played. That's why he found his own way. He found what appealed to him. Now, here's the other thing I think, Alan, what I do when I'm just noodling around, I'll try and give you an example. I'm just going to free form. I'm not going to look. Remember, mistakes are really important. Most of your best stuff's gonna come from a mistake and looking down and going, what did I just do there? You know, so I'm nervous, so I'm not gonna play very well. And usually I would say, play really slow. Also, you don't have to do the scale in sequence. 
what I'm doing now, I'm just using a window. I know the C major scale goes, but I just, I don't want to do that. I miss a seven. And then I get seven later. Anyway, so I'm getting off track again. I get too excited. I'm meant to be doing um, what am I meant? four notes per string. This is super important. This is what Alan came up with. Actually, he didn't. The Greeks came up with this way before the Roman Empire. It's called tetrachords, but it's an Alan Holzer thing. If I say start, I'm going to do it in C. Play C major. I'm going to start. I'm on the fifth string. That's the C, first part of the C major scale. Now you know on the next string up, you know where the fifth is. Do the same thing on the fifth. Just put the two together. It's awkward for me because I'm trying to get it in the camera and I, I don't sit in this position, so I'm going to fuck it all up. But Now what's interesting is the next time when you go to the fifth, to carry on with the major scale, listen. That's the start of the Dorian, which is a root a second, a flat third, and a fourth. And the next time up, see this is why Alan didn't like the B string, because it's like, when he, he liked the symmetry. Classical instruments like his violin is all tuned in fifths, guitars are all in fourths, except for the, the G and the B, you know, because that's a major third. And Alan said if he'd gone back, he would have tuned all to fourths. Now Alan did use alternative tunings on guitar, he tuned to fifths at times. He also tuned, um, Pitch shifters. I think metal fatigue, I think that's a flat second interval that he plays all that in. Which is like, who would do that? Alan Holsworth would. Why? He wanted to see what it was like. And he wanted, once he hears something new, he's going to make something out of it. I don't really do that. Um, I kind of learn stuff. My thing is, I, I don't even play like, I, I like to do things like this. What I love about, I mean, I love that Alan does it, but Alan said that in his video, he goes, he, did, he said the guitar wasn't for him. He would never have chosen that. He had no money. Um, he would have been a horn player, but he made the guitar into his, you know, it, it's just a tool and he gets out of it what he wants. Like with me, I like cross tunings and stuff. I like all the Jimmy Page stuff, but I wanted to know, I like, I'm a guitar tech and I need to know the psychology behind players, why they think the way they do, why they choose those, those notes. A lot of it, quite often, is, is you know like Django played that way because he was he didn't have much choice. Those little fingers could yeah he could just barely get a cut like he was doing that sort of thing. That, that those fingers are just sort of sitting there. That you don't have to like if you're trying to do Alan Holzer chords, you need your hands. You need all four fingers working. Right, where am I up to? I'm, I'm too far in now. 25 minutes in now, I'm never going to wait for this. Um, so, I've shown you modes. I'll just tell you modes. In, I've got a colour coding system. The reason I can see this different to all of you, I colour coded all the system. It's very simple. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, green. Why? Natural. The trees are green. Everything's green out in nature. So, C, D, E, F, G. No, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Everyone works from C, I work from A, why? Because originally we worked from A minor, not C major. That's why the pian low end of the piano is down below C. A human voice used to go below, you know, that's the lowest notes, that you know, in the range of humans. That's the lowest people, not low lifes, but the lowest voices, that's down where they are. The lowest one they could get was a low A, I think. So we used to work from A minor, but now every, you know, it's all been hijacked and C majors will be on end all. Walter Becker said that the piano hijacked harmony, you know, Western harmony, because the third string is, uh, sorry, the third, the major third, is 13 cents sharp. Now, 300 years from Bach and all those guys who brought this in, now I'm not putting equal temperament down or whatever, I know it's got, you know, beautiful, mu we've all created beautiful music on it, but if there's inherently something wrong, which is why the blues has got flat thirds in it. Now, when you say flat third, I mean flatter than, like, when you hear Beck, Jeff Beck play, It's even flat. Those are, it's all around the third, and there's varying degrees of how flat they go. Originally, it was really quite flat. When you're not in equal temperament, 
it's more like natural to blues and stuff like that. And you'll notice in the orchestra that, that when they, you know, G flat and F sharp are not the same thing. They, because they've not got frets, and Alan started out without frets on a, on a, a violin, when you take the frets away, all this stuff about equal temperament goes out the window. And that's why Becker called the piano the jailer of all keys. The jailer of all keys. It's the one instrument that travels seven octaves in its range. Everyone thinks it's all locked into tune, it's not. It runs flat that way and runs sharp that way, even in equal temperament. Even in equal temperament. The other thing people don't realize, equal temperament's going, but the natural temperament, the universal tuning, Pythagorean tuning, if you will, is running at the same time. That's why you. That's why we have guitars that we can and we bend notes in. I know Alan didn't bend notes. I know, but he, he's um, he's coming from violin and he's he's got a different thing. To, he's listening differently to a lot of people. I like the blues. Alan tried to avoid the blues. We know that he didn't want to get into it because he thought it was all cliched. He thought jazz was cliched. He thought everything was pretty much cliched, and that's why he invented his own thing. Anyway, this has been enough of a ramble. Let me know what you think. Um, tell me what areas that might have interested you. Maybe you want to know more about the modes. The color co I was doing the color coding. So all the red notes are all sharp. Why sharp? That's um, A sharp, B sharp, C sharp, D sharp, E sharp, F sharp, G sharp. Because red, when you cut yourself, we all bleed red blood. Whether we're black, white, yellow, green, whatever, we bleed red blood, with the exception of blue bloods. But I can get into that on another thing. Don't, sh don't say that now. Um, now, the last lot of you know, the notes are blue. Why? Because blue, blues are flat. You know, you get a flat tie, you're depressed. If you're depressed, you play the blues, you come out the blues. People think blues is depressing. It's not. It's the uplifting to bring you out of depression. So why blue? Flat tires, the blues. So now you've got A flat, B flat, C flat, D flat, E flat, F flat, G flat. That, if you think about that, that's seven notes in, that are natural seven notes that are sharp and seven notes that are flat. That's 21 notes. There's only 12 frequencies. That's, and that's only 21 out of a possible 25, which makes up the full alphabet. And on that note, I bid you farewell, because I knows that you knows that I knows things that you knows that I will let you know. Or something like that. I'm trying to work out some like gimmicks and stuff. It's, I'm really not Mr. Gimmick, you know? I fuck it up all the time. Anyway, whatever it is, that you're looking for. I hope this helps you in your quest. And the quest is just to make new music and just see things differently and have new ideas. Fresh ideas are exciting. New music's exciting. Alan made new music all the time. Please start looking elsewhere. Don't keep looking back in what people have told you. You're coming from the past. Alan's going to the future. Coltrane going to the future. Messiaen going to the future. Anyway. And cut.